Greetings to dear listeners. My name is Miss Leslie Sunny from the Department of Commerce, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. And today we will be learning an interesting topic that is classical theory of rent. Before starting about the classical theory of rent, let us see what are the learning objectives for the day. After this module, you will be able to understand what is the classical theory of rent what are the various assumptions that needs to be considered while studying classical theory of rent a detailed schedule along with diagram to study and understand the classical theory of rent and at last we will also study the criticisms which led to the formation of modern theory of rent The classical theory of rent was introduced by great economist Mr David Ricardo and he said that rent is that part of land which is paid for the fertility rent is that amount which is paid for the fertility of the land according to Mr David Ricardo rent is that portion of the earth's produce which is given to the landlord for the original and indestructible power of soil now let us understand what is original and indestructible power of soil by this mr david ricardo meant that land is a free gift of nature which means that it is a gift given by god and hence it has some natural powers which cannot be eliminated by anyone so mr david ricardo said as land has some of the power and is a free gift of nature according to the nature of fertility some amount of rent has to be charged hence the concept of classical theory of rent was introduced now let us understand what are the assumptions of classical theory of rent before starting the assumptions i would like to draw your attention that classical theory of rent is also known as ricardian theory of rent the reason being it had been introduced by mr david ricardo now let us understand what are the assumptions of ricardian theory The first assumption is rent occurs only to land. Mr Ricardo said that rent can only be charged on land. Apart from that nothing. Rent can only be charged from land. Second is land has only one use that is cultivation. According to Mr David Ricardo he said that land has only one use that is cultivation or in general sense we can say production apart from that land has no other use the third assumption of classical theory of rent is supply of land is fixed which means that there is an inelastic supply of land by inelastic supply we mean that even though the rent is increased the supply of land will be fixed in nature the next assumption is fertility of land is indestructible which is very true because mr david ricardo said that land is a free gift of nature and hence it has some of its power that is to produce more and more and to increase the fertility now The next assumption of classical theory of rent is rent arises due to the differences in soil. According to Mr David Ricardo there were different types of soil which means there are different grades of soil. Some of them will be fertile in nature and some of them may not be that much fertile in nature. So because of various forms of fertility rent is charged also mr david ricardo emphasized on superior land and inferior land 
according to mr david ricardo superior land is a land which has a lot of fertility and inferior land is a land which has less fertility therefore he categorized the bases of land into different kinds that is superior land and inferior land the next assumption is there is tendency to move from the most fertile land to the least fertile land which means first we will cultivate a land which has maximum fertility or which can give us maximum production or output then we will come to a land which is less fertile in nature the next assumption is total cost spent on each land is same which means that even though there are different grades of land even though there are different grades of land the cost or the total amount which will be spent on each grade of land will always be same like there are different grades of land say a b c d and for each grade of land 1000 rupees is spent so the same amount of money will be spent on different grades of land irrespective of their fertility the last point is no rent land is known as marginal land so according to mr david ricardo there is a concept of marginal land which says that it is a type of land which produces no rent or we can say it produces zero rent so this type of rent was known as marginal rent as now we have understood what was the concept which was said by mr david ricardo we have understood the assumptions now let us understand this in a tabular representation and after this we will also plot the table in graph so in the screen it is visible that there is different grades of land that is a b c and d as we have already studied in the assumption firstly the most fertile land will be used that is a in the following table a is the most fertile land so it will be used first then comes b fertile land that is it is fertile but as compared to a it is less fertile land the c type of land is less fertile as compared to a and b and the d type of land is the least fertile land so in assumption also we had studied that various grades of lands are there and firstly the most fertile land will be produced now second is the amount spent just some seconds before we had discussed that whatever may be the fertility of land good or bad the amount spent on each type or grade of land will be same so it is 1000 1000 1000 1000 in each case now let us understand what is value of output value of output means the total product which has been produced by different grades of land so it is very normal to understand that grade a is the most fertile land therefore it will have maximum output so grade a has an output of 40000 grade b being a lesser fertile land has an output of 30000 similarly c is less fertile so there is an output of 20000 unit and d being the least fertile land has the output of 10000 units now from the above table let us determine how we can find the rent so the formula of rent is total output minus the cost which we have incurred okay total output which we can see in this side and the total cost let us assume it that it is 10000 rupees because as i had already said that same amount of cost will be spent on 
all the different types of lands so now let us solve this we know that our total output is 40000 so according to the formula we have put 40000 and minus cost which is 10000 rupees it gives us the rent of 30000 similarly now let us find the rent for the grade b land we know that the total output is 30000 rupees minus the cost which we have incurred 10000 it has given us 20000 as rent now let us move to the part number c that is total output is 20000 minus 10000 the rent or the cost which we have incurred the total rent will be c but now when we see grade of land d here we see that the total output is 10,000 and the cost incurred is also 10,000. So the total rent is 0. And as we had studied in the assumption also that when the total rent is 0, it is known as marginal land. So this is the tabular representation with the help of assumptions that we had discussed in the Ricardian theory of land. Now let us see the graphical representation of the table that we just discussed. So in the right side of the screen, you can see the tabular representation and on the left side of the screen, you can see the graph which has been plotted. For the plotting of graph, we have to consider two things that is grade of land which will be taken on x-axis and the value of output which will be taken on y-axis. Now let us see the graph. So we have drawn two axes that is x-axis and y-axis. As I said that x-axis will represent the various grades of land and the y-axis will represent the value of output okay so now we know 10,000 20,000 30,000 and 40,000 is the value now we have plotted it on the y-axis and now let us make some of the graph so for a the total value of output is 40,000 so we selected 40,000 and we have drawn this bar second is b 30,000 we have selected 30,000 and we have drawn this area. Now C has the total output of 30,000 unit. We have selected 20,000 and this we have selected C grade of land. And D which is the least fertile land has the total output of 10,000. So we have selected 10,000 and drawn the option D. Now from this graph we will find out the rent now we know that the rent for grade a land is 40000 minus 10000 which will give us 30000 so here we can see that this is the whole area of grade a minus 10000 which is the cost it will give this area as rent the gray area or the grey shaded area represents the rent which has been earned. Similarly, for the B, B value of grade, we can see that 20,000 is the total rent which has been earned. And for C, the total rent which has been earned is 10,000. But here, no rent has been earned or this is known as no rent land. Why? because the rent incurred or the rent earned here is zero now as we have understood about the graphical representation with diagram let us now move to the next part that is criticism of classical theory of rent though we have understood this theory it has a lot of setbacks the first setback is rent restricted to land only as i had already said in the assumption that mr david ricardo said that land 
or the rent can only be charged on land rent can only be charged on land which does not hold true in today's era like if you want to have a bike for one or two days you will take it on rent or if you do not have your own home you are staying in others home you will pay some amount of rent so this was the criticism which other economists gave that as ricardo said that rent can be charged only on land is not true the second criticism of classical theory of rent is land has alternative uses or in the assumption we had said that land can only be used for cultivation and the other economists said that this is wrong in today's world also we know that land has various other uses other than cultivation we live on land and other work are also done on land only we set our machines on land also so this was other criticism which was given by other economist third is concept of marginal land is wrong as we know that marginal land is a land which is zero rent land it was said that it does not exist in real world even if a land is there it is able to produce some amount of output hence saying that marginal land is a zero rent land is completely wrong the fourth criticism is rent is not limited to original and indestructible power of soil though land is a free gift of nature and yes it has some of its power but it is wrong to say that it has original and indestructible power why like we cannot say that land is indestructible at cases it can be destructible like if it happens that some natural calamities come so the land will be destroyed and the fertility is going to be hampered so it was also one of the criticism and as mr david ricardo said that land has some original power which was not true to the own sense for sure land has some of its power but for the least fertile land also we can use some fertilizers or scientific methods and increase its fertility so this was also a drawback next is wrong order of cultivation mr david ricardo said that there are different grades of land a will be the most fertile land and then less fertile land will be there but it is very difficult to determine which type of land will be fertile in nature that is a difficult phenomenon it can occur that in a rural area a land will be there which is very fertile but it is difficult to find so to say that there is an order of cultivation and first the landlord will only cultivate the most fertile land is somewhere wrong so these were the criticism of the classical theory of rent with this we come to the end of our module i hope you have understood thank you